Okay, uh, this is page two of our information notes that are on Africa. And we'll go to number 20 today on these. Uh, this first one, Nigeria, has become a top oil producer of the world, but at a cost of uh, human life and environmental ruin. So you can see probably the government is, is more concerned about getting money and income from the oil than they are preserving their environment and um, looking out for human beings and their safety as they work uh, to get this oil. Uh, pretty, pretty devastating to the country. I, I don't think they can continue to do that with some, without really some per, pretty permanent uh, damage to the country. Uh, human activities that lead to decertification or desertification. So that term means an expansion of dry areas. So there's three factors, overgrazing of vegetation by livestock. This is where you have a small amount of area, but a large number of animals and they trample it down. They, they eat everything right to the nubs. And as they continue to walk around, they're smashing down the ground. It's, um, it just doesn't really give the vegetation a chance to grow. And so you can see in some of these pictures how the sand <clears throat> is encroaching upon the farm ground. Uh, farming can be um, a reason if you're clearing trees to, to raise crops. Increasing population is kind of an indirect cause, but it, it can also lead to that. Uh, it used to be an old movie that I would show the kids in geography, and it showed a, a caterpillar um, you know, bulldozer out on the sand dune. It was pulling a tank of oil and a guy was back there with a big spray nozzle and they were spraying out over the sand. And the reason for that, I don't know if they had seeds within the, the oil, but uh, it would allow the, the seeds to, to remain in one spot to keep the, the sand from blowing away. And hopefully once things could start growing, it would, it would keep it, uh, more stable and uh, and allow other plants to grow and not have the sand blowing and moving and doing that. Um, the Aswan High Dam, this is a major project. I believe it was back in the 70s. Um, supplies farmers with water. These are the positive things about the dam. Uh, controls flooding. It increased arable land, which is a land that can be farmed. Uh, uh, and that was by 50%, a 50% increase in arable land. And it also created Lake Nasser. Um, it, I don't have it up there, but obviously with the dam, you get an increase in uh, the production of hydroelectric power, uh, definite uh, benefit. You also have with the lake being created, maybe some recreation areas, and certainly the dam being built as a tourist attraction. So. Those are some positive things. However, there's some negative aspects of building a dam. Uh, people can have to be relocated. If you're building the dam, the water backs up, you might uh, eventually flood or cover up a city. Uh, I, I always mention in China, the Three Gorges Dam, there was a city that, uh, that had 80,000 people that they had to move um, in building that. So. Um, Treasures could be lost. This area here, they've had to literally cut it out of the mountain because you can see the encroaching water. Um, they then reassembled it so people can still enjoy that. Decreased fertility. So the ancient Egyptians planned on the Nile flooding uh, every year. And as it flooded, it would deposit silt and sediment onto their farm ground. With the dam being built, uh, a lot of that sediment can't make its way downstream. Um, rising water tables, so uh, the amount of water underground can raise up, and rates of malaria increasing with standing water. And because the water is now backed up, you do have an increased amount of water that can be lost to evaporation. However, between the positive and the negative, obviously there's more positive or it wouldn't have been built in the first place. Okay, so now in our second page, we're moving on to chapter 19, which is uh, cultural geography. This picture here shows them getting some water out of the ground and 
Uh, got their camels getting a drink there. Uh, there's a, a major group uh, called the Maasai, major ethnic group in East Africa. They live on the grasslands and they herd livestock. Um, very typical appearance. You can see they're dressed in red. They've got white staffs for herding the livestock. And kind of a thing I haven't really looked into, but you often see pictures like this where they're jumping. Uh, the other group is the Kikuyu, and they're the largest ethnic group in Kenya. There's literally hundreds of ethnic groups in Africa. So we finished up 2020 last year. We're now into 2021, and this word pandemic certainly has a whole new meaning to us here now. Um, I would talk about this to the students. It was, you know, it was just kind of something out there that really didn't affect them, but certainly we have uh, a connection now to the word pandemic. An uncontrollable outbreak of a disease that affects a large population over a wide geographic area. And so the example here, I may have to change my slide to the coronavirus pandemic, uh, but the one I've got showing is AIDS. Kind of interesting, 1986, how it started, a little bit of tan, so the darker colors are the higher percentages. Two areas in Africa getting larger, this area now getting quite dark, and here in 2003. But I like to make the students aware, if they notice Madagascar, dark blue, light blue tan, more tan, uh, about the same, and then back to blue in that one. So being an island nation, they could control that probably a lot easier than on the mainland. Islam is the major cultural and religious influence uh, found in North Africa. Typically textbooks will cover this area with the Middle East because they are culturally very similar. And then a stateless society is one in which people rely on family lineages to govern themselves. Uh, I tell the students that um, they have to live, they're living somewhere, they're living within the boundaries of a country. But if they, if they pretty much mind themselves and don't cause any problems for the government, the government I think would allow them to, to basically rule themselves. Okay, apartheid is a complete separation of the races. Uh, this was taking place 60s, 70s, 80s in Africa. The ANC is the African National Congress, um, very similar to what we had in the 1960s here in the United States with um, the issue of race relations. Um, you can see this one says for use by white persons. We had the same thing. Drinking fountains, restrooms, different things were segregated. Uh, this picture here says free at last, and I think most everyone knows who that is. So F.W. de Klerk was the president of South Africa in 1989, and then the man in that previous picture, of course, is Nelson Mandela. And he was the leader of the ANC until he was imprisoned for his activities with the ANC and apartheid, trying to get rid of that. Um, he became president of South Africa in 1994, and uh, he was in prison for 27 years, uh, just a, an amazing amount of time. Uh, it's hard to even imagine that. And that finishes up our second page. Uh, another picture of a large animal. This one's not real common, but it's called an eland. Uh, pretty amazing there. Thank you.